Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ingrid and my inner palette. In this video, we're going to be talking about the main tools that you can use for dousing. Have you ever heard of dousing? In Spanish, it's called radiestesia. So when it comes to dousing, um, to douse, you have different tools that you can use so that you can magnify the frequencies that your own auric field is receiving or feeling in the sense that you can actually visually see what's happening around you. So one of the things that I love to do with these tools is connecting to my own intuition. So to do that, I go through a um, specific set of, of steps that I get to connect to my intuition and get very accurate messages. And um, I'm able as well to read my energy field, to go around the house and read as well the energy of the house that I live in so that I can take more um, informed decisions about my health and how to solve different issues that I might be facing. And in this case, I want to do a very short video just to show you three of the main tools that you can use for dousing. So first of all, we have the most common one that you might have seen in, in a lot of um, places, and it's a pendulum. So pendulums, they can be different shapes, different sizes, different weights. This one uh, in particular, you can see it's a metal pendulum and it's a quite quite light one. So it's easier in, in that sense for it to move. So for example, if I'm just thinking, what is your movement for yes? What is your movement for no? I'm really trying not to move my arm or anything. I usually would have this a little bit lower so that I can tuck my arm in a little bit more to, to get that stability. But um, this, it's a metal pendulum. Then we also have crystal pendulums. This will be kind of like the most common crystal that you can get, just like a clear quartz. And there are all the type of shapes as well when it comes to crystals and different type of stones like this one. And you can see that some of them, they also have different type of uh, signs like this one, that it's a Reiki sign. Now, when it comes to pendulums, we also have different weights. The lighter a pendulum is, the easier it would be for it to move. But for example, if you are outside doing a reading, you might want to have a pendulum that is slightly more um, heavy. So then if there's a change in winds or the, wind, uh, the weather or the wind condition is not really calm, then you know that what you're measuring is not the wind going around and moving your pendulum, but that is streaming that um, energetic field that it's reading and showing you the results. On a second note, um, the other tool that I have available here, it's a biotensor, which is this one. And it's very similar to how a pendulum works, but it's, it, it changes quite quickly. So it's very, very a sensitive type of tool. So for example, if I hold it um, just like this, and I'm thinking about, um, yes, and it's showing me like this type of movement. Now, if I think about what is no, and you see that it starts changing quite quickly. So yes, yes, no. And this one is a very good in a way to use when you are um, with patients and you're measuring as well, like the different energetic centers and things like that. Know that you cannot do it with a pendulum, you can, but it takes a little bit longer. So this is why I would recommend this for people that has already used a pendulum for a while and then start connecting to a different tool because they do work differently. And another one that I don't necessarily have one myself, but I created one 
uh, for this video. Um, it's the L rod. So mines are quite big. <laughs> quite big because I used whatever I had available and the L rods um, they look like this so it has a metal preferably it would be copper because it transmits the energy much easier than other type of metals but still you need a metal so this one you can see that it's shaped as an L but ups upside down and here how I build it like super easy this is a bamboo straw so I just put it here inside like this and the thing is that you need two of them so when you're doing measures with L rods the idea is that if you get close to something that might have this are really good to measure energetic fields and ley lines and things like that or uh, being out in the open when you're looking for uh, water, things like that, you, you can use this ones here. So I'm gonna try in a way not to move it too much um, because I don't want it to move. But what happens is that when you're measuring something, they're gonna move and create a cross. And it could be, for example, if you're measuring um, where are energetic fields that are harmful for you, and you're moving. Uh, I've tried before with the phone, but it, because I'm recording with the phone, you're not gonna be able to see it. But I went into the phone and, well, I'm getting closer now, and you see that it starts getting across. If I pull back, then they start spread, spreading. And it's not that I'm twisting them like this. I'm, I'm just trying to go forward like it. And then they start like measuring different things and here they start opening again so this is roughly how they work of course this is like super homemade so not the best uh, and most reliable tool but at the same time I usually I'm not doing this type of um, measurements uh, for this you can also use a pendulum which is very portable it's um, very easy to work with it is not heavy um, so you can just carry it in a little pouch and like this and the beautiful thing about pendulums is that you can also use them with different type of charts what do I mean like this one that has uh, for example different percentages or numbers um, there's like the normal ones that might be round like this, that has like yes, no, maybe, or ask again, when you're asking questions um, with the pendulum. How to use them, I don't want to get too much into that in this video, but I wanted to show you that there are different ways and different tools that you can use for dowsing. So let me know if you have any questions and I'm happy to reply or if you have uh, curiosity about this. I also run different workshops throughout the year and I have like beginner, intermediate and advanced and with the beginner we learn all about how to ask accurate questions. I only teach pendulum um, at this stage because it's easier and more accessible for people to get a pendulum and the, the great thing about it is that with the beginners I teach you how to ask accurate questions because a lot of people may say like oh am i gonna get married tomorrow yeah okay yes now i'm moving it right um oh yes uh, yeah. and the type of questions that i do they're more holistic well-being style of questions rather than predictive type of questions so i'm all about asking questions that will help us grow right when we get to the intermediate part of it with a pendulum and a chart, I teach you how to test your own different energetic centers and test as well what are the stuck emotions that are not allowing the flow of energy to go through and techniques on how to deal with that, how to change it, how to start healing yourself. So after we've connected very, very deeply with our intuition, then we jump into like healing. And then on the third one, uh, it's much more advanced in the sense that after working with our intuition, after starting like healing our own body, then we start healing 
in a way our environment and when I mean environment is our home and how you can understand the geomagnetic stress how can you change things around the house so that it serves to you for your health and for your family's health so if you are interested as well in those type of workshops that I do run twice a year at this point um, just check the description box below and I'll just leave the details there so that you can see updated whenever they're running. Um, so I hope that you have a beautiful day, beautiful afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world. And remember to like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. See you next time.